Lee over at Time Riders Wee Little Cars sent me this Hot Wheel 67 Shelby GT500 casting. The plan is we're both going to do Mustangs, polish them up, convert them to red lines. Naturally, I jumped at the chance because I love doing that, and Lee's a master of doing these things. So uh, there's no way I could pass up this opportunity. You can see it's a little play-worn, but uh, it's in pretty good shape. You know, the glass was in good shape. Um, the casting itself didn't have any dents or anything. The paint wasn't great, but that didn't matter. So uh, took it apart. There's a little rust on the axles, but that doesn't matter because those are gonna go. Uh, the interior was pretty clean. Um, so then it was just a matter of you know throwing this thing in the stripper. Everything's plastic other than the body itself. So I need to make this look like a, an original red line. So uh, there you see it after I got it out of the stripper and uh, hit it with the wire wheel, cleaned it up a little bit. And I started the process of uh, getting the body in shape for the first polishing. And what I'm doing here is I've got these little spongy sandpaper things. <laughs> um, they're 3000 grit, so they're exceptionally fine. And what I'm kind of learning is to not be afraid to sand this, but the difficulty on this casting compared to some others is there's a lot of detail on this casting that I don't want to lose. And so it's not like, it seemed like every panel on the body had something. There, there were no just full flat sides, flat top, everything had a little raised area. There you see it after the first polish. And it's looking pretty good at that point. And uh, that might have been the second polish. I can't keep track of it. <laughs> <laughs> which one it was. I polished this thing several times. But then the hard part for me is getting the polish out of the nooks and crannies. So uh, before degreasing the whole thing, I would go, go over it with those little brushes and toothpicks with IPA on them and try and get the polish out of the small areas. And then I do degrease the whole thing to get any remaining polish off of it. That's always my concern, is there's going to be some polish in uh, you know, one little crack somewhere and the paint's not going to stick. That's, that's my greatest fear. I decided to hit the polished casting with blue metal cast paint, which I'm sure comes as no surprise to anyone, and then went over that with the Minwax uh, Clear Gloss Poly. So while that's off drying, it's time to work on the base. As I mentioned before, the axles were kind of rusty but those aren't sticking around. Uh, it's sometimes the easiest way for me to get these axles out. This one had some play to it, so I was able to jam the tweezers under there and just pop them out. So then it just became a matter of washing that base, getting the rust off, getting it good and clean. And then once that was ready, I hit it with Model Master aluminum plate and then went over that with the Ultra Gloss Clear Coat, the matching Model Master one. They're both lacquers. So then that's off drying. I got out the foots to clean up the windshield a little bit. I did not want to sand it or anything because again, it's in pretty good shape and I don't want to screw it up. So <laughs> and I, I was worried about that when I'm sanding the glass that somehow, I don't know, catch something and something will go wrong. And I have, uh, you know, there's, there's always the rescue plan no matter what. But like in this case, you get it nice and polished and there's the rescue plan in any situation is gauzy, gauzy, gauzy. That clear coat that gauzy puts on there, it's a, as I've mentioned before, it's a thick clear coat. It's definitely thicker than like the pledge clear coat. And you know, it can hide a lot of sins, which is nice. You just dunk it and then wick off the excess and uh, you're pretty much ready to go. You don't want there to be any real thick puddles of that stuff on there because it's just not gonna look right. 
And so that's why you see me uh, getting as much off. I realized when I was doing this one, I really shouldn't be using these big flat bladed tweezers that I've always used up to this point because they end up holding a lot of the gauzy. And I'm not sure why that never occurred to me before, but I think the next time around, I'm gonna be using just real thin tweezers and there'll be less to clean up. So you just cover that and uh, there you see the base after it has that aluminum plate on it. I've used rub and buff. I've used a bunch of different things before this one. I thought I'd use this aluminum paint aluminum plate paint and uh, yeah that's one of the ones I mentioned before uh, on one of the postings on the community tab that I got cheap over at Hobby Lobby on a clearance they had all of their model master sprays for like a buck 57 a can and so couldn't pass it up busted out the 3d variants that I printed did them slightly differently this time I had to make the holes for the axles a little bigger and I used an even bigger drill bit to make more of an indentation just at the tips of the bearings so that the, the squished parts or the ends of the axles could recess even further, allowing the bearings to really seat well into the wheel itself. And uh, I'm really pleased with how that worked out on this one. And you'll see it here in a second. I only show one of the axles, how I built the first one for the, I think it was the front, and here I'm sinking in the uh, bearings, just using some needle nose pliers to get them in there. But you uh, should be able to see it here in a second. That unlike other times when I've done this and uh, I didn't make that added indentation with a slightly larger drill bit just at the very end, you can see they fully recessed into the wheel, where before they ended up leaving some room just created by the end of the axle. I hope that makes some sense. Uh, I can't think of a better way to explain it other than there's the hole through the bearing that's the size of the axle, and then there's a, a very short uh, indentation that I made with a larger drill bit so that the uh, compressed end of the axle could fit into that recess in the bearing itself. And again, you can see there the, the bearings fully recessed into the wheels. Those are bright vision wheels. And the axles are just off an old scrap pair of uh, wheels that, you know, I have a pile of these things that I've ripped off of other things that people have given me. I. I've got a bunch of them. So that's basically the process. Now we just get to put this together. I'm thrilled with that blue, that Minwax blue. And uh, it's interesting spraying it because you want to get complete coverage. And obviously the more you put on, the car becomes darker. And that's almost a, a trick or a problem with airbrushing that I think, or with rattle canning, that I think airbrushing, you definitely have an advantage in being able to control the spray so you can control the darkness a lot better. But you can pull it off with rattle cans, like in this case. So there you see it. It's all put together. And, uh, Thanks again to Lee for sending me this casting. This was a great idea. This was fun. God knows I love a Mustang. God knows I love a Shelby Mustang. <laughs> the Mustang I had years ago was definitely not a Shelby. Um, so that's where it started. And it's a little dinged up, but uh, I think it looks pretty damn good as a red one. I didn't put any detail on it or anything like that because, again, I was trying to simulate an original red line. And uh, I think this might have been able to pass for one of those. I hope you agree. Thanks again, Lee. Hope you all enjoyed this video. There's some glamour shots coming up. 
everybody. Stay safe and healthy out there. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do. I hope you enjoyed this video. And a special thanks to my Patreon members for uh, all of their support. Catch y'all in the next one.